In this video, we're going to look at the anatomy of the brain. We're going to firstly look at, at the basic anatomy, really simple, and then we'll look at the artery, the arterial supply, blood supply to the brain. So here we're looking at the lateral view of the brain. The cerebral hemispheres originates from the telencephalon. This is embryology. We have four main lobes, the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. Then you have the cerebellum, which is part of the metencephalon. The pons is also part of the metencephalon. And again, the telencephalon and metencephalon are just um, terminology uh, names used to uh, explain where these structures originate in terms of embryology. Now let us look at it, take a sag sagittal section of the brain and see what anatomical structures are important to note. So remember, this was a telencephalon, which was your cerebral cortexes. Then you have the cerebellum, which is your metencephalon, together with your pons, remember? The brain stem is made up of three sections. From the top to the bottom is the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Within the center here um, of the cut brain, there is the thalamus, the relay station of the brain. Below the thalamus is the hypothalamus, hypo as in below. So hypothalamus below the thalamus. And below the hypothalamus, there are two lobes, and these are known as the pituitary lobes. The hypothalamus and the pituitary lobes, or glands, are important endocrine glands. Now let us look at the brain from an inferior view. So the inferior view of the brain, you can see the telencephalon, your cerebral cortex, and you can see the frontal lobe here and the temporal lobes on the sides. Then your brainstem, which is made up of your midbrain, your pons, and your medulla oblongata. This is your cerebellum. Some other important structures which can be seen from here um, are your optic nerves, which is cranial nerve number two. And this uh, sort of branches off the optic chiasm. And under these structures, you can find an the long olfactory nerve, which is your cranial nerve number one, which is your spell smelling nerve. It is, your, it is a sensory nerve. Okay, let us look at some uh, the same view of the brain again, but this time look at the arterial supply of the brain. So crawling up the brain stem, you have the vertebral arteries, two of them uh, which come from the subclavian artery. These vertebral arteries join to form the bacilla artery, bacillar artery, and the bacillar arteries continue to crawl up the brain stem, up the pons and midbrain bef before basically bifurcating. And this bifurcation will form a circle around this region. This circle is known as the circle of Willis. The circle of Willis gives off a few branches, the posterior cerebral, the middle cerebral, and the anterior cerebral, cerebral artery. Joining the anterior cerebral arteries is the anterior communicating artery because it's the communication between the anterior cerebral arteries. And joining the middle and posterior cerebral arteries is the posterior communicating arteries. There are another two important arteries that help form the circle of Willis. And these are the internal carotid arteries, which are branches of the common carotid artery. The middle cerebral artery is actually a branch of the internal carotid. The internal carotid does not give off any branches during its track from the media, me, from the essentially chest to the brain, middle of the brain. Let us now look at the circle of Willis again but separately from the brain, just by itself. Again, here are your vertebral arteries, which form the bacillar artery from the back of the brain. And it will crawl up the brain stem, and then branch to give rise, essentially, to the circle of Willis, together with the internal carotid. But essentially, the bacillar arteries branch, they bifurcate, uh, giving off the posterior cerebral. Then you have the middle cerebral, which supplies the center of the brain, and here you have the anterior cerebral artery, which supplies the front of the brain. The anterior cerebral are uh, connected to each other by the anterior communicating artery, 
and here is your posterior communicating artery. The internal carotid artery comes from uh, comes straight here and joins to the circle of Willis. And that is your circle of Willis, the round structure, and it has variations, of course. Um, and these are the main arteries found in the circle of Willis. Now let us um, use this information we just learned about the cerebral arteries and um, talk about some clinical stuff. So stroke is a serious um, condition. Stroke is where we have interruption of blood flow to the brain or the brainstem for more than 24 hours. Um, there's a terminology known as transient ischemic attack, TIA. And this is essentially when we have interruption of blood flow to the brain less than 24 hours. Stroke and TIA are life-threatening. A CT scan has to be conducted as soon as possible to distinguish between two types of stroke, hemorrhagic and ischemic stroke. If it's an ischemic stroke, thrombolytic therapy has to be initiated as soon as possible. Now let's talk about these two types of strokes, ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke. Here I'm cutting a coronal section of the brain. In red are your cerebral arteries. Here is your middle cerebral artery we're zooming into, and this is your internal carotid that, that joins to the circle of Willis, forms the circle of Willis. Let's first talk about ischemic stroke. So ischemic stroke, an example um, of ischemic stroke is where we, can ha where we have plaque, where we have a plaque formation in the internal carotid, which can lead to a potential stroke. Or the plaque can, you know, it can rupture. It can rupture, creating a thrombus. Thrombus results in an emboli. The emboli then will travel up to the brain. And remember, this is the internal carotid. So the internal carotid will travel up to the brain, to the circle of Willis, and actually go to the middle cerebral artery because the internal carotid is the main, it, it forms essentially the middle cerebral artery. So here we have the emboli, and the emboli, the thrombus, lodges in the cerebral artery, resulting in an ischemic stroke. The second type of stroke is the hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke, a hemorrhage, is essentially when we have the rupturing of the vessel, blood spilling everywhere. So zooming into this middle cerebral artery, we have uh, the rupture of the vessel because, for, 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 for example, the vessel is, has an aneurysm and it just grows until it ruptures. So that is hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke usually occurs in the anterior cerebral communicating arteries, posterior cerebral communicating arteries, and branches of the middle cerebral and basilar arteries. So that was just a quick overview on the stroke. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.